What's up guys? Thanks for watching Claw Struck. My name's Brandon and this is episode 4 of Claw Science. It's painfully obvious that I'm obsessed with claw machines. No denying that. But you know, part of my obsession with them was just trying to figure out what makes them tick. If you're anything like me, maybe you've asked yourself the same questions. Or perhaps you're just a casual observer. In this episode of Claw Science, I'm going to give you an in-depth look at the claw machine and hopefully answer some of your questions. Once you put your money in the machine, it needs to be validated before the machine will let you play. If you insert a dollar bill, it goes through this unit here called the dollar bill acceptor, or DBA. If this machine validates your dollar, it accepts it, stacks it in the rear, and sends a signal to the game to give you the credit. The operator can collect the dollar bills on top here or remove the whole cartridge to collect them later. Now my dollar bill acceptor is under repair and I'm going to remove it. Now we get a better look at the coin mechanism. The coin mechanism is what validates your quarters. It's going to check the size, the weight, and to make sure it's not magnetic. If it validates your quarter, it drops out the rear, trips this switch, and again sends a signal to the game to give you a credit. Let's take a look at how the game operates. All the functions of the game start with this silver box. This is a power supply. When the game's plugged into the wall, the AC voltage from the wall gets converted into various DC voltages from this power supply and sent to the main game control board. Before the power from the wall can go to the power supply, it has to pass through this switch. This switch allows the operator to turn the game on and off if he's troubleshooting or programming without having to actually physically unplug it from the wall. Below it you can see the main fuse for the game. In addition to that power supply, this is the transformer that converts the 120 volts AC from the wall into 48 volts AC that will later be used to power the motors of the game. The 48 volts AC from that transformer is rectified by the main control board into 48 volts DC. This is the voltage that controls the motors. Now some claw machines have a sound board and a main control board. On this machine the sound board and the control board are integrated into one. Here you can see the two chips that contain all the sounds for the game. Now these are replaceable if I ever chose to upgrade the game or change the style of game. This is the chip that contains the software for the game. This chip is also replaceable if I ever wanted to upgrade my software or just change the gameplay. These three LEDs are the status lights. When the games first turn on it runs through a series of checks and these lights show if it's past the checks or not. Any errors or bugs during gameplay also show up here. If there's one thing all arcade games have in common, it's dip switches. These switches allow you to control basic functions of the game. The manual tells you what the options are and you set them accordingly. Things like turning the sound on and off, the cost of the game, the mode of the game, and even turning payout on and off. In addition to the dip switches, my game has this secondary control board. You can see it's got two push button switches and two potentiometers. The two push button switches allow me to enter an audit and test mode to check the game and the game settings menu which allow me to change higher level settings. Uh, the lower potentiometer allows me to adjust the basic strength of the claw and the upper potentiometer adjusts the volume of the game. So I'll show you guys real quick how I'd go about programming my game. I got my dip switches set and if I wanted to get in my menu I press this button here. Okay pressing that button turns my credit and timer screen into my menu screen and I control it using the joystick so I can scroll up and down through my settings and when I get to the setting I'm looking for I can scroll right and left to change the value. Now my game did come with a photo eye and not all games have this. The photo eye casts a beam of light into the prize chute. If you win a prize it breaks that beam of light and signals the game that you have won. I'm gonna put my hand in the prize chute you can see the light turns off on that photo eye as I, ca as I pass my hand through the beam. Now these are used for payout rates. It lets the game know that it gave out a prize and it's time to reset the payout rate. On my game it keeps track of wins and it also signals an audio response to let you know that you won or you lost. The joystick. This obviously controls all the functions of the game, but how does it work? Let's take a look. There are five switches on the bottom of the joystick. One for each direction of travel and one for when it's time to deploy the claw. Pretty simple. Now let's take a look at the crane mechanism. This is what moves the claw around and drops the claw. It contains all the motors that make it work. Now we're looking at the top of the trolley. You can see that there's two motors, one that drops the spool of string and the other one moves the trolley back and forth. Here we're looking at the part of the crane that moves the trolley forward and backward. You can see the motor tucked up on top that powers it and you can also see a couple switches in there. Those two switches are the homing switches. 
they let the claw know when it's over the pry chute. So when this switch is tripped in front, the claw stops moving forward. And when this switch is tripped here, it lets the claw know it has to stop moving to the left. That's the only way the claw knows that it is over the pry chute, otherwise the motors would just keep spinning and spinning. Okay, I've taken the front cover off the trolley so we can see some of the inner workings. And I did go over some of this in a previous claw science episode, but we're going to review it one more time here for you guys. This is really the part of the trolley that lowers the claw. You have a spool of wire here that the motor lowers, goes around the idler arm and down to the claw. When the claw bottoms out, the idler arm moves and trips this switch that lets the machine know it's time to raise the claw. When the claw is all the way up, it trips this switch here and lets it know that it has to turn off the motor. That's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick in-depth look at my claw machine. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future episodes of Claw Science, put them in the comments down below. If you like this video, let us know by smashing the like button and make sure you hit subscribe so you're the first one notified of any future uploads and giveaways. Thanks for watching.